D-A-M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C Everything you need to know about the Vigo Dem Party So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere Get ready for a chat with a chair I'm Joe Atling, Chair of the Vigo County Democratic Central Committee. Welcome! To the award-winning chat with the chair. Hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas and happy new year as we approach 2022. Can you believe it? And what better way to go into the new year's? We got a huge show tonight. Big celebrity joining us here. He's got the big hat on. Tell our viewers who you are. I'm Rod O'Kelly uh, from Boot City. Rod O'Kelly from Boot City. So uh, we have been Driving by your establishment for years, always been amazed at uh, the operation you have down there and, and the limousine out front. But uh, many of our viewers may not exactly have seen you around and about unless they've been in the, in the facility. So talk to our viewers a little about your background. Well, uh, actually, I moved here to Terre Haute in uh, uh, 1970, really. Uh, around the first of the year, you know, I was uh, uh, got out of grad school down there in Virginia Tech and uh, I had uh, a couple of chances to go to work in Kansas, go to work in Texas, and, but uh, you know Pfizer had a tremendous operation here at that time and offered me a job here. I'm from Illinois originally, over around Effingham, you know, and uh, so I got to thinking about it, and, and I really wanted to go to Texas. My grandparents were from Texas. And uh, the only thing that stopped me was uh, the man that owned the company back then was 80 years old. Now back then that sounded kind of old. <laughs> At this point in life, I don't that think sounds so. pretty young. So, yeah, yeah, still, still good. And I, you know, I needed a job real bad just getting out of graduate school. So I thought, oh, buddy, if something just happened to this guy, you know, uh, I'm sunk, you know. And and the guy really wanted me to come down there. He flew down to Virginia and talked to me a time or two. And so I, I didn't. I decided to come here at Pfizer. It was a good. Uh, it was a good move for me. You know, a few years later, the guy that did own it, he passed away. Uh, they ended up selling uh, uh, the company to uh, Tandy Leather Company. You remember? Oh, that? absolutely. Back, yeah. Back Tandy, years and yes. years ago, and then I think Radio Shack may have yeah, bought them the whole deal. Well, of course, uh, Radio Shack wasn't ideal, so I can imagine where I'd ended up. Yeah. There. But. Pfizer was a great company to work for, and I worked for them about five years, and then took out all my own. Not doing boots. We we had a private research farm out there. Okay. And I, you know, I actually worked for Pfizer and Eli Lilly and a number of those people, and so uh, I, I had a small feed mill, and uh, I wasn't using it very efficiently. So I got that thinking of, you know, what am I going to do with this extra time? You know, I needed that thing running all the time. So I called a friend of mine over in uh, Ohio that had a tremendously big feet mill. In fact, he'd asked me to go to work for him, and I, I, I wouldn't after I left Pfizer, and asked him if he knew where it was uh, a dog food plant for sale. He said, yeah, he said, uh, I do. So I go over to Ohio and this guy has this dog food plant and it was an old elevator and he bought it for his son-in-law. But his son-in-law had no desire to be in the dog food business. There was this part scattered all over and I think this thing was a mess. So anyway, I ended up buying it from him, started the dog food plant. And I'll make this story a little shorter. Well, what happened is I was making this dog food Nobody in Terre Haute would buy it. Do you remember a great Scott, you know? Absolutely. I, I tried to sell them dog food. They kind of told me to hit the bricks. And several other people around, you know, because... 
No, no, not the brick oven baker either. No, no. Not the brick oven baker. No. <laughs> Just checking. No, no. I, I would That's for that. all our great Scott customers. Oh, buddy, they had, they had donuts in there. The oh, yeah. Big time. You know. How about those chocolate chip cookies they used to sell in there? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not a chocolate chip guy, but I can eat a lot of donuts. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, can, we, can we can live with that. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway. What was I the name of the dog food? Uh, pizzazz dog food. Pizzazz dog food. Pizzazz dog food, yeah. So I just started making that, and, and uh, that little patch of ground came up over there on the highway. Uh, now, I'm not going to ask you if you remember that, because <laughs> Jay, Jay remembers it, I'm sure. <laughs> that used to be a little truck stop that was not only used for a truck stop, but for other things there. Yeah, back <laughs> years ago. People all, people all over knew where that thing was. I went to a barbecue with a friend of mine, college friend over in Bloomington, Illinois one day, and tell me about I bought this land there and started this door and couldn't figure out where it was, you know, and kept on finally I told him, I said, well, is that old Lisa's truck stop? He said, I know exactly where it was. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we bulldozed that all into the basement down there, you know, and built a pole barn, started selling dog food. It didn't work that good. I'll tell you, we didn't have enough variety of products, so uh, I was going to build a half that into a boot store. And my wife said, "No," I said the way you operate, you better just build on to it and keep that. And I did. So that's my story. So let's talk a little bit about your education, though. So what what actually was your degree in? Well, it was uh, in uh, animal nutrition and, okay. and uh, you know some biochemistry and. And, Smart guy uh, over here. Well, uh, uh, I got out of school. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but, uh, so anyway, you got your graduate degree from Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah. Home of the. I did. Yeah, and uh, whoops, got here. kinds of alarms going off here. <laughs> yeah. They're the Hokies. Yeah, the Hokies. The Hokies, yeah. Have there you ever seen that campus? Oh yeah. When I went down there, it was not a beautiful place. Wasn't. No. But uh, actually, I was very fortunate to be honored as an as a, a outstanding graduate for the Ag School here about uh, nice. seven, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, something like that. I had not been there for a long time, went back here. The place is absolutely fabulous. Yeah. You know, fabulous. And they've got an uh, uh, alumni center. And uh, They got a picture I, of you in it now, or? No, I, I don't know if they did that or not. I, I don't remember that situation, but uh, they had this guy that gets up and gives this talk, you know, and he says, welcome to our dining center. And I thought, well, why is he saying it's his dining center? <laughs> well, I've come to find out the guy owns like 100, 150 motels, and he just gave him the money to build it. <laughs> Yes, it is his dining. I guess he can call it his dining yeah, center. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. I was all for Absolutely. It. it was great, yeah. Give so, several million dollars, you can do it, uh, say what you want to say, right, I guess, yes, right? Yes, you got a different look at that time. So mm -hmm. the property you're talking about then is positioned down on South US 41 in Southern Vigo County, is that right, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and actually, we've been there 32 years, and uh, when we started, I think there was still up there where. Uh, uh, all the lows and them is there's some old barns and stuff there you know there's not much down for so in case other than jay are watching this uh is the name of the previous truck stop was what lisa's truck stop lisa's yeah. truck yeah. stop so yeah. there are viewers if, <laughs> i see a few of our viewers grinning out there yeah. so yeah. now we know uh, some of our production crew is blushing so yeah. Yeah. now we know what that's all about yeah. so well i tell you i now this is a, this is kind of a long story, but we had an old lady that had the uh, Granny's Antique Shop, Granny's Antique Shop, right next to uh, right next to where I have the store now. Well, uh, you know, once wild days get kind of slow, and Granny and I'd meet out there at the property line and, and get talking. Now I can't back these stories up, but. Granny tells me the way that those people got busted there at that truck stop was that two brothers owned it. They got in a fight. So the guy takes off, one of the brothers takes off going to Indianapolis, and he was walking along the highway, thumbing rights, 
and a state policeman stopped him, or stopped and picked him up, an unmarked car, and the guy didn't know it was a state policeman, and he got spilling the whole beans on the deal, you know, so that's the way the end came. Never good, never good. Never good to spill the beans. Right, right. yes, yeah. So, uh, what's the status of pizzazz dog food? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's gone. Uh, I had it for, uh, uh, I ran it for about 20 years. We did all of southern Illinois, southern Indiana. Uh, had a lot of big dealer network. Delivered, you know, lots down there. Um, one day I was in the store, a guy comes in and he says, would you sell this dog food company? Well, but then my machinery was kind of getting a little older, you know, my kids were, you know, kind of out of college. And, um, I said, yeah, I would. He said, well, what do you take for it? I said, well, you look around a little while, I'll tell you. So I told the guy and he said, yeah, good deal, I'll take it. Well, he had a couple of partners and uh, so they paid me about 80% of my money and then the partners got in a big squabble and so the, the other 20% was not a good deal. I ended up getting it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, when you were starting your dog food operation down there at the, on South US 41, what was it that led you to then combine it with a boot store as opposed to maybe a dog supply store or yeah. grooming services? What, what, about, what was it about boots that attracted you? I, I got the answer to that. Right. It wasn't making any money. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it, it wasn't. The, uh, the, feed, the feed company was, we were, you know, just barely, you know, I mean, we were making enough to keep it open, but that was not the idea. And uh, so then I got to putting a few horse holders in there and a few things like that. But see, I always liked boots because, like I said, my grandparents were from Texas. Every year at Christmas, they sent me a new pair of boots and a hat. Clockwork, you know. So I always liked boots. Well, uh, I heard of this uh, Western Market Show in uh, Indianapolis. It was a trade show. Uh, somebody told me about it. Bingo, I'm, I'm in. I'm going over and buy some boots, you know. So, uh, now keep in mind, I, you know, I didn't have any idea what retailing was about on this. Uh, you know, never been around. So I go over there and sure enough, there's this big auditorium. They must have, you know, 250 vendors in there. And uh, I walk in there and sure enough, the old Acme Boot Company, they're not in business anymore. It's right there in the corner. And I said, hey, can I help you? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, I'll take some of those and some of those and some of those. And he said, yeah, well, okay. And he gets his order back and he said, where are you from? I said, Terre Haute. No. He said, I got all the dealers over there I need. Said, well, okay. <laughs> you know? But, uh, you know, like always, you go on down the road there. And there was this guy from a place called the Texas Boot Company. They're not in business either now. But it was a it was a big company when they pulled it up. So I got talking to this guy. He said, "I he said I'll sell you all the boots you want." I said, "Oh, good." He said, "You ought to try some of these." He said, "They're, they're what they call FD boots." I didn't know what an FD boot was, but it was a factory defect. You know, I got a nick in them, or basically what it was, it was boots at the end of the line. They didn't sell. They just put them in the pile. So anyway, I said, okay, I'm in. So I buy these boots from this guy. Come home, we take them all out of the box, and set them on these shelves, and let me tell you what, we sold boots the first day. Seriously, the first day. So with these FD boots, I took care of myself. I had my own insurance policy, so I, I put down what I thought the boots ought to be worth and I added a dollar to them. So then if a guy brought a pair of boots back and he said, hey, these 
you know, weren't working right. I said, okay. We threw them in the trash, gave them another one. I was self insured. So. <laughs> and uh, so that, that worked well for me, really worked well for me. <clears throat> well, then what happened? The Texas Boot Company kind of got in a little trouble and uh, internally, and we had no FD boots because we couldn't. We couldn't get them anymore, so that's when I went mainstream. Everything's new boots now. The FDs are gone, and then the new boots are yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So, so did you always have an affinity to boots? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I so I, I, I can't help but notice you got yeah. some good-looking boots on now. What are, what are these? Aren't FD boots? I can tell that well, right see, now. Those were thirty years old. Is that right? Uh, Thirty years ago, that was about a thousand dollar pair of boots. That's right. when the Texas Boot Company had hand handmade boots. Is this from the Texas Boot Company? Yeah, it is. Nice. Uh, but I tell you how I got those boots now. Right. Uh, they had the salesman for the Texas Boots, and what they do, they would give one salesman one boot and one salesman the other boot. You know, like this other guy, one was in this area and the other was over in Ohio. So they're, they're small boots because I've got a relatively small foot. So this guy comes in and, and this guy was, uh, he was a very, very conservative salesman. So I always had a lot of fun with him anyway. He wanted to sell me that pair of boots. Well, I knew he couldn't find anybody else that fit in them, you know, so. We kicked it around for, I don't know, two or three trips, you know. He finally went to Ohio, got the other boot, and bought them, and <laughs> I bought the boots. But they're anteater boots. I don't think they let them, I don't think you can even make the boots now. But back then, the the retail price was about a $1,000. Obviously, I didn't give him $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's, it's some of the ways we got into the boot business. So, of course, uh, when you first then put the uh, boot store, it was much smaller than the operation is now. So how oh, many yeah. times have we added on to that yeah. building? Oh, golly, I don't know. Uh, the, the way we kind of operated there is uh, sell enough, you know, to like get a little money in the bank, you know, because, uh, uh, you know, I... I kind of had to do this a little bit at a time, you know. So we'd get a little money, we'd add on there, you know, and then uh, I added on two or three buildings, and then I added that restaurant on, you know. Yeah. And, and did it. So when you first uh, opened up and had those FD boots, how many pairs of boots were we talking about? Oh, gosh, well, I had that semi that, uh, that I was delivering dog food in, and uh, I don't know how many how many boots there were there, but I remember one time I sent a driver down there and we bought a semi-load. A semi-load of boots. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Now, we didn't sell them all in one day, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, there was, there was a lot of boots, but this salesman, and, and, you know, along the line, a lot of people give you help, or at least in my case, they have, you know, the world's been good to me in that respect. I've had a lot of help from people. This guy that was uh, the salesman, over there at Indianapolis sold me the original amount of boots. He and I got to be fairly good friends. Well, I was running that research firm at that time. Now, this before cell phones. Every once in a while, he'd call me, and I had about 12 barns out there, and I had phones and all of them, you know, with bells on them, so you could hear me. He'd run over there and pick the phone up. He'd get a good deal. He'd call me, and he'd say, you buy these. I said, I'll be a long way. Trust me, he said, buy these boots. I only saw the guy about two or three times after that. He'd call up, but I tell you what, he always, always good to me, truthful to me. Well, how many boots, how many pair of boots we got in the boot city these days? Well, before the, uh, uh, before all the shipping problems, we <laughs> used to keep about 10,000 pairs. 10,000 yeah, pairs. Yeah, there's about, uh, and then we can track them pretty easy because we have everything, you know, uh, wow. computerized. I guess if we didn't, we'd be behind the curve, you know. But, that uh, might fill up more than one semi. Uh, I, I don't know how many you can get. We're going to have to figure that out. But, uh, we'll have to talk to Tobias. Yeah. He's our, our uh, <laughs> he, he might go pack it in there, figure yeah. out how many you fit in there. But, yeah. Uh, 
But uh, our, our inventory is down about 10%. Not that we want it down. It was just a matter of, you know, you yep. did just no supply. I think it has eased up here in the last two or three weeks a little bit for us, but uh, it's still not up to where it needs to be. So can we talk about the yellow limousine? Fun vehicle. <laughs> yeah. It's got horns on it, too, doesn't oh, yeah. it? It's got yeah. horns on yeah. it. Well, what's yeah. the story behind that? Well... Um, That's not left over from the previous owner, is it? No, no. Okay, no, just checking. No, no, just, yeah. no, no, it's all, it's all original equipment. Just checking. <laughs> uh, no, I had, uh, I tell you, I've had several things out there, but I always tell people about the uh, story about those cars. The first one, Larry Schopmacher sold to me. He had a auction down there in uh, River Bottoms, and this guy, it wasn't a limo, it's just a great big old Lincoln, and uh, I had it there with horns on it and all that, and then I bought a, uh, a little Volkswagen, I put a sign on it, it said crowd control, you know, on the side, and had a lot of fun with it. So my daughters came home from college, and they said, Dad, for goodness sakes, clean that place up, you're turning this into a junkyard, you know. So, well, okay. So I got rid of the cars, you know. Well, then these customers come by and they'd say, hey, whatever happened to that old car out there? You know, I said, gee, I need another Lincoln. So I, I went and bought me another, uh, went and bought me another limousine, you know, put some horns on it. You gotta keep your daughter out of it. She's, <laughs> yes, she's meddling too much. Yeah. Well, they were, they were both, they ganged up on me. Yeah, yeah. But that limo, we've had uh, a lot of fun with it, you know. Uh, I had any some, any stories you can tell here or not? Oh, some of them, I guess, are they're. Stash limitations kind of run on those stories or not? <laughs> no, they're kind of entertaining. I had some neighbors out there, you know, that uh, wanted to, uh, and I'll tell you this gerbil story in a minute too. But <laughs> anyway, these neighbors, they uh, they wanted to use my limousine, and I knew these guys; they were kind of characters. So I said. Uh, all right, guys, you can use that limousine. But I said, don't be going out there and, you know, doing a lot of drinking there. I should have known better at the time because I knew them pretty well. Well, the next morning, they were up there with Stuckies walking around the railroad track trying to find my hubcaps. <laughs> they'd hit it at about 80 miles an hour. You know, hubcaps just fly all the way. Probably my best story was the limousine. And, and I, I never did mind loan it to people, because it's not valuable. Uh, but I had this little girl at work for me, and uh, she had a prom date. Well, enough they could have the limousine. I said, yeah. I said, uh, can you get your dad to drive it? She said, oh, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll drive it. And uh, I said, well, okay. So she gets the limousine. And, uh, the next day she brings it back in and and I go out there and look in the back seat and there's shavings all over the back seat of that car, wood shavings, you know. Now this is not normal. <laughs> that's, that's good to know. I, I kid you not. So I said, my gosh, Patty, what happened? You have a durable back here? And this little girl gets real red in the face and she said, well, I, Actually, we did. She said, I had to take my little brother to the babysitter. <laughs> and he took his gerbil along and he got loose in the back seat. <laughs> so that's where all the shavings came from. <laughs> well, that explains the gerbil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've had, uh, we've, had, uh, we've had a lot of fun with it. So sit back, relax, and watch from anywhere.